today and occasionally on Fridays. Mm -hmm. so it's a weird just not even starting your week there. <laughs> right. You're like, hmm, this is interesting. Exactly. Well, well, I'll let you go ahead and get started. Just go ahead and share with me just because I honestly don't know anything about y'all's. So feel free to share with me and, um, and then I'll go ahead and get my class started after that. Okay. Well, I'm Victoria Cantu with Fixed Home Warranty. And I always like to say we are the Uber of home warranty. And I say that because of our awesome technology. So it really is that easy to file a claim. You simply open up the app, you select what's broken, you can upload photos. That way our technician can get a good idea of what's going on prior to actual arrival. Um, your client can actually select their date and time on the app that they want us to come out. We operate in two hour windows. And the best part about it is that there's not a ton of waiting around for your client. They're actually going to receive a 30 minute notification text letting you know, letting them know that we are on our way. And what's really cool about this and like Uber, you can actually track the technician up until the moment that they arrive at the property. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's the app. You'll see the little orange truck moving. You're like, oh, they're five minutes out. I need to rush home. Maybe you're still at the office or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. But they selected that 30 minute time window because most people work about 30 minutes from home. Gotcha. Okay, that's awesome. Um, but what really sets us apart from traditional home warranty is that we own our own technicians. So we have in-house technicians, meaning we hire, train, salary, employ, background check, and drug test them. So they do have to go through extensive testing in order to be an employee of FIX. So we don't, we try to refrain from using third-party contractors. Um, so that's truly what makes us different from traditional home warranty. Of course, we do offer three different plans. Um, I can email out to everyone. Um, if you don't have that information, it's also in the office in y'all's little vendor program. Definitely. Here for y'all as well. Um, but we have $50 service fee to have us out should something happen. Um, our renewal rates actually decrease. So if your client renews the following year, no matter how many claims were filed, the rates can go down. Most home warranty right. will say, oh, you filed 10 claims, so your rate's going to go up this year. We don't do that. We're able to save money because we do have our in-house technicians that we use ourselves, and that's why we're allowed to do that. Okay, um, that is awesome. Yeah, something really cool that we did as of February 1st is we have removed coverage limits. So we don't have coverage limits on HVAC, garage doors, plumbing, and electrical. We do have coverage on appliances. Um, and just keep in mind, we do make the R410A modification, the new modification that's mm -hmm. <clears throat> happening. And then also, um, we do cover Freon. So 100%, we don't have caps on it. Um, so just keep that in mind as well. A lot of home warranty companies will say we'll only cover X amount, and then it's $10 a pound from there, and then it costs your clients a lot of money to have Freon. Gotcha. Well, that is awesome. Yeah. And then last but not least, we also do have seller's coverage. So if that is something that you're interested in, truly free to put on a listing. Um, if for some reason they do need to use us, still $50 service fee to have us out. Of course, then um, seller has three options. This is in the case that they did have to use us. If they didn't, no claim, no action. It really is free to have on there. But um, should they have to use us, $50 service fee to have us out. Of course, we want to convert the home warranty plan to the buyer. So as long as seller purchases home warranty plan for the buyer, any three of our plans, they're good to go. Awesome. But awesome. for some reason, because we do understand that it is up to the buyer, um, but let's say for some reason buyer doesn't want fixed home warranty, um, then the seller then has two options. And what they could do is they could pay the cost of the repairs, which typically doesn't happen unless it's a really inexpensive repair. Right. Or they could pay our prorated amount. And what we do is we take our 650 whole home plan because seller's coverage covers everything under 650 whole home. Um, they'll take the 650, they'll divide it by 365. It comes out to $1.78 a day. And then they'll take the number of days the listing was on the market. So if it was 30 days, $1.78 times 30 days, comes out to like $54. So then they paid $54 plus the $50 service fee to have any repairs taken care of. That's perfect. Awesome. To have on a listing. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. And then I just have one last thing. So yeah. if you get to the end of this and you listened to everything, I'm going to do a gift card drawing, um, $25 to Amazon. And all you have to do is simply email me 
You can open up your KW Technology app. All of my information is in there. And all you have to do is email me one thing that you know about fixed. It can be our $50 service fee. It can be your rep is Victoria, me, you get to work with me. Um, just one thing, send that to me in an email. Um, and I hope to hear from y'all. Awesome. Awesome. And what's website, phone number, email, how can people get in contact with you just in case like me, they're unfamiliar or they're new? Yes. So my email address is just very simple. It's V as in Victoria, Cantu, C-A-N-T-U at fixrepair.com. Um, cell phone number, you can text me 972-971-0795. Zero seven nine five. Yes. All right, perfect. Just putting these in the chat. You said nine seven two nine seven one zero seven nine five. Perfect. Right. Just want those in there so that it'll look all nice for everyone on the right side of the screen when we post this later. Awesome. Is there anything else you would like to share with us, Victoria? I appreciate you taking the time to join me today. Yeah, of course. No, I think that's everything. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I look forward to meeting you in person whenever all this craziness clears up. Yes. And uh, thanks for taking time out of your day to join us today. Absolutely. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. All right, YouTube world. So I am going to be starting up my class here today. We're going to be going over goal setting today. And that's going to be here in command. All right. So we're going to be coming in. Oh, let me join Margaret in real quick. Hey, Margaret, you're my visitor today, my one. I'm going to be putting this on YouTube, so I've got a, a witness here. <laughs> I've got you here with me. Um, so we're going to be going over goal setting today, and that's going to be here in command, agent.kw.com, just like all the other classes. And on the left side of the screen, right under the red KW, we're going to be going down to what these are called applets, all right? We're going to go down to the one that's three bars, kind of in the middle of your screen, and that's reports. We're going to be going to the reports tab, all right? Once we click on that, last week we had touched on dashboard and reports and emails. Today we're going to be going over goals, all right? So I wanted to save this one for a specific class so that y'all can see how activities come into play. You see I've got leads in there, contacts. All this is going to come into play as we're going. So your first thing that you're going to want to do, so we came into reports and we clicked on the goals up here on the top of the screen. What you're going to want to do is go over to the right side of your screen on the top and click the teal goal settings button and we're going to get started in there you can see we've got a kelly guide here just like we have for our marketing profile for our agent sites among all these other things that we have so you see we're going to set our goals set our conversion rates review them and then see what's next so you can just scroll down in the middle of your screen to get started and so that is a massive profit goal let's say i am a normal human being and i'm not trying to make a million dollars per year Get Kyle in here real quick. Kyle, good to see you, my friend. Just wanted to let you know. So we're in the report section of command and we went to the goals tab and we are setting up our goals today. So let me back up just so you can see that and we're on the same page. So I went over here to the reports tab and then up at the top, I clicked on goals. And on the right side of the screen, Kyle and Margaret on um, goal settings is where we started out. I think six of us are in a different Zoom meeting. We were like, where is Clark? Okay, interesting. Let me take a look at that, Kyle. Let me take a look at my Zoom account real quick and see what could be up. Because that is interesting. I just started the class that I have right here with this link. Well, I posted it on Facebook, Kyle, um, and Margaret did as well. Um, and I posted it recently. You can feel free to unmute if you want. How, you said there were six people in there? In this other Zoom class? Yeah, um, I did it from the text from Margaret, and I think uh, that link takes us to something different than this because I went to it, solutions and I went straight in here. Okay, gotcha. Okay, well, dang, okay. Well, they'll see it here on YouTube after the fact then. Um, it's all good. Life happens. Usual tech. Yep, yep. As, as it goes, showing that. Hey, Kyle, on. who were they? And I can reach out to them. Okay, cool. Uh, Jose. April Ma, uh, Scott Bernard. Forgot the others. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Appreciate that. 
So I'll go ahead and start over here with you, Kyle, and uh, I might even need to trim up this video a little bit, but I'll go ahead and start sharing with you so you can see kind of step one and on, um, and that way people can see this on YouTube as well. So started out on command, just like regular, typed it in the search bar. Over here on the left side of the page, we went down to reports, just the three little bars on top of each other, kind of parallel. And at the top, I went to goals. And then on the right side, the teal goal settings button. That's what we're going to click on. And once we do that, we get another Kelly guide, just like we've gotten for agent sites and other things. And we'll start it up. And so see, we're going to have this GCI breakdown pie chart here with our profit goal, our monthly profit goal, our business makeup of our percentage of listings and buyers that we work. Um, so anyway, we're just going to be going through on the right side of the screen here to get started. You can set your goals either for this year. Oh, it looks like it is just this year right now. We can't, we're too uh, soon into 2020 to be setting up 2021. So let's say just like most agents when they're new and they get in the business, kind of the overall overarching number that everyone says they wanna make in profit every year when they start their real estate business is $100,000 per year. So that's gonna be our profit goal for the year right here. You see on the left side of the screen, this is updated. Our pie chart has upgraded as well. And you can also hover over the eye next to all of these things, and it'll tell you kind of what the idea here is. So the amount of profit your business earns before uh, taxes after subtracting cost of sales and operating expenses from GCI. So the big thing here to keep in mind on the annual profit goal is this does not include taxes, okay? So it's kind of right there in the middle of your net and your gross. Um, here on expenses, this would be something that takes place whether or not a transaction occurs. So maybe you have a transaction coordinator on salary if you have a team. Um, your lead generation marketing expenses for door knocking or mailers or open houses or Facebook ads, whatever you're doing there. Um, education, CE, just a class you might have taken at a title company, automobile expenses, you know, gas, all of that type of stuff. So let's say those expenses were... We'll say it's a thousand dollars a month and we're going to do the entire year here so we'll say for twelve thousand dollars a year that is our operating expenses right there okay and then our cost of sales here you can see these are made um, these are expenses that are made when a transaction takes place so splits to agents that you're paying out of your pocket transaction coordinator isas so you may have your transaction coordinator on salary or they may be um you know by the transaction it just depends on on how your breakdown on that is. Um, market center and brokerage fees as well. Um, you know, paying the MCA department, all that kind of stuff. So on your cost of sales, let's say, and I mean, this would be also, you know, say for a listing just in general, we've got photography, staging, um, closing gifts for clients. So let's say this was 20, 25 grand a year. We'll say, obviously, you're going to be putting this in for your business and what your, you know, business is made up of. You can also see in here, we also have a lease makeup as well. So if leases are a, you know, a percentage of your business that you would actually include as a direct part of your business, not just something you work here and there, um, you might put that in there. So maybe, uh, maybe you start off, maybe you're a new agent, newer agent, and you start off with 50% buyers. 30% listings and 20% leases. Oh, it says NAN, I might've made it upset. Let's see here. Okay, well, we'll leave this back at 50. All right, we'll leave it at zero. So leases are getting a little hiccupy right there. Y'all saw it did upgrade over here a little bit. If I put that at 49, put that at one. Okay, there we go. See, it, it added it up there now, so. Let's say on this one, it was 30% listings and 20% on the leases. So see, over here on the left side of the page now, it decided to play nice. So let's say we're a newer agent. We have 50% of our clients, half is, uh, or our clients rather, is buyers. And then maybe a third is listings and a fifth is the rest left over is maybe some leases that you've worked that you're converting to buyers later on in the future. And your average commission per unit so this is just the 7150. I think that's just the US average um, of just what home sales are. Obviously you would do this for you specifically, just because the office is in Richardson, doesn't mean that's where you're selling and what your specific personal um, 
you know, average commission is and, uh, you know, where you're selling, you may be luxury, you may be working with, um, you know, the middle income bracket, uh, just depends. So if your numbers are different in here, you'll want to make sure to put those in. And then let's see, inputs for business makeup should correspond to inputs. Okay, so let's see here. Let me add in a few other people. Dallas joining us. Perfect. And let's say we make an average commission of $500 a lease, okay? So we'll leave this as 7150. I mean, just for quick math for y'all. If it was a $250,000 house, you're getting 15,000, you know, so on, so on, so on. So just do your math, um, make your calculations in here. Um, on what you usually make on a listing commission, on a buyer, on a lease. You could just do that by adding up from your CDAs um, from the past. You could do that, make it really simple. So anyway, let me pull this part of Zoom over here. So now we've gone through, we've set our year as this year. We've set our annual profit goal. We've entered in our expenses of $1,000 a month for $12,000 for the year. And then for cost of sales, this has happened. These are costs that take place when a transaction actually happens. So that would be, we're putting in 25 grand there. So about $2,000 a month, 2,000, a little under $100 a month. We've got our business makeup right here of percentages. We've also got how much per uh, unit we usually get on a commission. Clearly that would be different if it really, you know, if you're working the luxury market, your commissions are going to be higher. If you're not just working flat fee leases, which honestly vary so much that I just put 500 to make it easy. So anyway, we can go ahead and see. Right now, we're gonna to need to make $137,000 a year based on this to make our profit of 100,000, okay? Our monthly goal is 8333. So you can see this nice breakdown of everything. We're gonna go ahead and click next now, okay? So when we do that, you'll see, so this, hang on, let me zoom out my screen a little bit so that we can see everything on one page. I'm not sure why uh, my computer has been doing this. It might just be a me thing, but I've had to zoom out my computer a few times lately to make everything show up on the screen. One more. Okay. All right, so you can see we've got our conversion rates in here, and these are what our goal conversion rates are, okay? And a goal conversion rate, I'm hovering over the eye right here next to it. It says each item below represents the rate at which one item converts into another. Example, you convert 5% of your leads to contacts. So each one of these is going to be then going on to the next one in terms of the percentages there, okay? So on activities right here, leads to contacts. So on leads to contacts, how many, um, when, you have, when you call 100 expireds, okay? So you've received these expired leads, you call 100 expireds. How many good convos are you gonna have out of that 100 calls that you can then follow up with and have a conversation with in the future about possibly uh, working with them as a client? Well, that auto fills in here as 5%. All of these are editable to whatever you want. Today, I'm gonna be leaving these numbers in for the most part because I don't know your conversion numbers. That's, that's really up to you, it's all personal. So leads to contacts, that would be say, or 100 door knocks, how many good conversations, how many door opens are you gonna get? Could be Facebook ads. How many clicks do you get that actually give you a real phone number? Uh, and so on and so on. Um, contacts right here to appointment set. So how many, um, how many times or how many people do you need to reach out to in order to get appointments set on your books? What's your conversion right there? So on this one, it's 5% on, um, on here, just on the autofill. Like I said, put in whatever yours is. So out of calling 100 expireds, say you have on this number, 5% of them, you get five good conversations out of that. Out of that 5% of people in the expireds, how many of those people actually translate to an appointment set? Well, on this one, given this, it would just be one at this point. Obviously, your numbers are gonna be different than this to a point. Um, appointments set to appointments kept. So one thing that would come into effect there, making sure that you're sending, um, I usually do day before and day of follow-ups, just making sure that our appointment is still on, especially if it's a lead of someone that I do not know personally and that I have not worked with before in the past. Um, if it's just a lead or a you know sign call or a cold call, anything like that that I don't really know the person, I wanna make sure and 
for setting both of us up for success that I'm making sure that that appointment is still gonna be taking place, okay? So let's say out of all the appointments we set, 75% of them we keep, okay? So three fourths of them, obviously if you have a higher number and you have 90, great, perfect. A lot of your um, appointments show up once you set them, that's awesome, great job. Um, here on appointments kept to agreements, how many people from the appointments that do show up, the people that do show up to the appointment, how many of those people are going to agree to work with me? Here, you see 75%. Then agreements to under contract or pending, how many people agree to work with me and how many of us get from agreeing to work with each other with a buyer rep or a listing agreement or even a buyer tenant rep for a lease for a tenant, how many of those people go into under contract or pending? That number, 75%, that's probably accurate, could be higher. Um, and then right here, this last number, I would assume, and I would hope it is definitely higher um, in your case, under contract or pending to closed. So a listing, getting all the way through the option period, getting everything negotiated and hoping everything doesn't fall apart. I would say probably 90 to 95% would be a number unless you've just had an unlucky run lately with some, some bad deals. Um, but if you're already getting to under contract or pending, I would hope that you're you're uh, able to get there uh, to where you want to be. So you see all the numbers in here change. See the 90 right here. If I made that 40, it updates to 40 immediately. So you can see a real live deal here, and you can see the different colors of lead gen being the lighter color, and profit goal being this darker color. Okay. So I'm going to leave that as 90% right there. I'm going to hit save and continue. We're going to go to review our goals next now that we've input everything. And then you can see here, now here's kind of our overall breakdown that we'd see on the goals tab once we go back into reports here in a moment, once we've finished up. So you can see our conversion rates that we just did, our GCI breakdown, like we talked about earlier, your annual GCI that you're gonna need to make to subtract these things out and make your profit out of it. We've got our business makeup over here of listings, buyers, and leases, and your average commission as well. So that's all we have on this screen. We'll go ahead and click what's next. And now what I'm gonna recommend all of you do once you get to this point and have set in all of your goals is go and click in the middle here, view my goals. And that takes us to the same, let me um, change the zoom here on my screen real quick so that y'all get the full version now. So this took us to the same screen we had earlier. So back on reports and then goals. Now you see, we did not have these numbers in here before, okay? So remember on our, um, it would have been activities, that was what this is talking about for leads. You're gonna need to complete 73,000 activities to get to your profit or to your closing goal. So I had set closing goal as 71 um, on a previous thing kind of back in the past. So that's where it's pulling all these numbers from here, okay? so. To get to my closed unit goal, this is where it would start from. So to get to this 71 closing goal, okay, 73,000 activities based on my conversion rates, because if your conversion rates are different, this number is going to be different as well. Um, so anyway, that's where that would come into play. And then for here, how many contacts do you need to make? Okay, so leads and activities kind of flow hand in hand. How many leads do you need to acquire? Okay then how many leads need to become contacts? 3,600 of them. How many of them, how many of those 3,600 contacts need to become appointments set? 184, okay, so so on and so on. You can see based on our conversion rates, this is where it pulled all of these numbers from, okay? You can also, instead of this year, you can put this month if you wanna see, okay, so now on a monthly level, that is nine closings a month to get to 71 um, for the year. You can also show all, or you can just do listings, buyers, leases. You can sort by that as well. And you can also toggle the compare feature as well. If you wanna go, um, we had done this the other day about all agents in your market center, in your state, the top 10% in the company, in your production bracket, above you in production. So you get a lot of different options and you can see it kinda looks like a bullseye now when we hit the compare button. So that's without comparing and with. See, so there are some different options in there that you can see. Your profit tracker right here, for me, it says zero because we run all of our team's um, transactions through the team lead. So it's not through my name anyway. But on this also, for the profit tracker, 
for you on your end, that would come into play in opportunities when you're putting things into your stages. And I'll touch on that here in a minute to show you. Down here as well, we have an activities breakdown. So you can see neighborhood search as well as the other. So the purple right here, these are three neighborhood searches. What these three year-to-date activities are, I've had three people download my app and set up neighborhood searches on it, okay? So that's where that three is coming from. And if I hover over the black right here, it tells me all the other things. So meetings, calls, emails, texts, smart plans, calendar, events, notes, and favorited listings. All of those things count as activities and where you uh, log all of those is on the contact. So we've talked about that before as well. So let's say with a AAA client or you know whoever, John Smith, whoever your client is, you had a call with John today, you wanna make sure you go into the contact and add that activity in there because that's gonna make sure that everything updates in here so that you can log everything correctly. Okay, so you need to make sure that you do that. You can also see the activities break down by the month. You can also show the percentage values as well. If you'd like, you can see again, goal conversion for this month or this year. You can see the profit goal for the month, profit goal for the year. You can also click on percentage of values. So what is your percentage of your profit, you know, to get to your profit goal? What's the cost of sales? What's the operating expenses? Okay. So anyway, that is your big breakdown here on goals. And you can also go into Kelly and ask her, what are my goals um, once you've done this? And um, I would assume it's an automatic update, um, but it may she may take a little bit to, to talk with it, but because it's all under the Keller Cloud, she should update pretty quickly. So even if you're on the go, even if you're driving from appointment to appointment and you just need to pull up Kelly and remember what activities you need to be doing based on you know all of your numbers that you had input here and you know you need to make you know, 100 more door knocks this week, you could check what your goals were and what your, um, how you're doing to uh, be on track for those things through Kelly as well. And I'm going to show you all real quick what I was talking about here for the profit tracker. So when you're here in opportunities, that these go hand in hand, the profit tracker and the opportunities. When you're in here and you're putting things in the cultivate appointment active under contract and close stages, when you're moving things from these stages, that's where the profit comes into play, okay? I've been just creating opportunities as needed um, on my own, just for myself, but that's where the profit tracker comes into play um, is when you click on these. So you see, we have an appointment right here for the team. This is not mine, but for the team. So you can click into here and see, okay, that's Mr. Fake Client Buyer, all right? So when you have things in here, you can take them from watch to nurture, and so on over to appointment. You can just click and drag um, to take your people through the different stages as you're preparing them. Um, so anyway, I wanted to give you all that little input as well. Anyway, that is, I know it's pretty much Kyle and Margaret today. I'm gonna be posting this on YouTube as always for the other classes. Kyle, Margaret, uh, Dallas, do we have any questions before we hop off for today? All good? All right, perfect. Well, it's easy enough. I know there wasn't many questions because it was pretty simple, pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. Um, but like I said, check out Kelly as well. Make sure your goals update in there and uh, just so you can have that on the go as well um, since command is online. And you're very welcome, Kyle. And um, we'll figure out that uh, that Zoom deal um, for in the future. Um, probably just communication hiccup, all, all good, easy to go. Um, so thank you for letting me know about that and for reaching out to everyone, Margaret, as well. So hope you all have a great rest of your day. Um, sales meeting starts up here in an hour-ish at 1130. So make sure you look out for that. And, and we'll see you all then. Have a good one.